Hey everybody, this is Everest Paradox, and welcome back to Monstrum. So, this week's Monstrum Challenge, we're going to be doing the Pack Rat Challenge, requested by this guy. And I'm not even going to try to say that name, because I know I'm going to get it wrong. But basically what this is going to involve is us picking up every item we happen to see on the ship. Now, in the case of locked doors or power doors, um, if I don't have the item to immediately get into those areas, or if I don't have the item necessary outside of objective-based things, so if I have a fuse door but I only have one fuse and I need that for the submarine, we're going to count those out of the challenge. If it's possible for me to get those, then I will do so. But just for the sake of speed and for the sake of the challenge itself, and the fact that if I had to go around and literally find noisemakers and, and such, this would be a very, very, very long video. But aside from that, that's the challenge. The only thing I can really see being an issue is picking up all the items that are breakables and having to break them. Because they only stack up to a quantity of three in your inventory. So as I throw them, I'm going to be making a lot of noise. And depending on what monster we get, that could be extremely problematic. But yeah, um, in other news... Uh, I picked up Fire Emblem, and it's really, really, really good. If you happen to have a Nintendo 3DS, I definitely recommend picking it up. Right off the bat, I was really, really brought into the story, like, really quickly, and I love all the characters, regardless of what faction you happen to be playing on at the time. Well, all of them except for one, and if you play the game, you'll know exactly who I'm talking about. Well, two. There's one on each side I really don't like. But the game starts out as a, a, a typical JRPG trope is that you start in the middle of the game, you play like part of a mission or part of a level, and then you get sent back sent back to the in a flashback to see what happens leading up to this point. And it's really really well done, and the voice acting is great, and the music great, and the story is pretty good so far. I haven't gotten that far, but yeah. Aside from that, I've been playing XCOM too. Um, I actually reached a point in my first campaign that I was going to be doing for YouTube, but decided not to where I literally could not beat the game. I lost so many soldiers, and so many of my soldiers were wounded, that I could not beat the game. I just ran out of people. But, yeah, aside from that, not been much been going on. I start my new job at the end of this month, and that's really the highlight of the month right now, is starting that new job and sort of getting acclimated to a, a new environment, a new experience. But let's go ahead and hop into the game and see what kind of challenge we get this time. Click. Yeah, I should probably make the comment thingy go away. Bye, comment thingy. But yeah, pretty much for this challenge, speed is going to be my ally. It's going to be my, my ultimate goal is to be as fast as possible. Because if I stay in an area too long, depending on who I'm fighting, it would literally mean instant death. I have noticed an interesting thing going on, though. Um, Big Red, specifically. He seems to be either faster or bugging, because he's, like, really, really quick right now. Okay, here we go. There we go. I have switched back to my my controller for the time being. I'm going to count all the notes as part of the challenge as well. Just to have that not become an issue. And as I go through, I'll, I'm also going to be... Like any of the glow sticks that I pick up... Obviously, I'm going to eventually stack up on glow sticks so much that I have to get rid of them out of my inventory. Because this isn't a, a mission where I literally have to hold on to every item I get. I just have to pick up every item I see. But for that specifically... Ooh, duct tape, thank god. For that specifically, I'm going to be um, breaking them so that they start glowing and then dropping them. That way I know I've picked up that item and I don't double back on myself. Ooh, well, that's weird. Uh, okay, I thought that was the the torch for a second there. That was close. Uh, is that the keys? That is the keys. Well, we're off to a good start, at least. Now, depending on what monster we get, we might... I'm cutting those, those time moves, like, right at the border. But items like the notes and the um, the audio logs, I will be interacting with just for the sake of making sure I've gotten them already. Thankfully, the audio logs, I don't think, attract the monsters, regardless of how loud they tend to be. 
which is good for me because those fuckers are loud. I don't know why I'm not using the duct tape. I just realized that I could be using the duct tape to disable cameras and I haven't been. Anyway. Okay, we got another glass, which means I have to break all three of these. And I haven't picked up a... I wish I had a backpack right now. I haven't picked up a um, fire extinguisher yet. Okay, it sounds like we might be dealing with Slim Jim. Okay, I need to pick that up at some point. Um, pick that up. Pick that up. So this is going to be a lot about speed and me just being very proactive about picking up and dropping items. So what I'm going to do for the sake of this particular inventory situation is I'm going to actually make a emergency run to the helicopter and just drop everything off. Otherwise this challenge is going to get significantly more tedious as it moves on, as it moves forward because I'll have to drop items, pick up items and pick up items again. It becomes a hassle. Now, if this is Slim Jim, he does have the possibility of popping up from the sides of the ship. At least he used to. That is a that is a situation that I haven't actually seen pop up as of late. But he used to climb up the sides of the ship to attack you. Which he's the only monster that could do that. Uh, drop that, drop that. Use this to do that. And while we're over here, I guess I will use, go to this side of the ship and do a little bit of exploration of the cargo area. Because we have duct tape, which duct tape is one of those items that's really, really hard to find sometimes. If you're not looking really well, which thankfully we did. We looked pretty well. Okay, we got the chain. We got a bottle. And no note. Wait, is that a note? No, that's not a note. That is a... That is a piece of a bracket. Okay, he hasn't aggroed to us yet. But he will, if he's given the opportunity. He will specifically aggro. We're gonna do the same thing for the flashlights, obviously, is we're just gonna turn them on and set them so that I know that I have already picked those up. I wanna go up and explore, but he's there, so. I guess super ha not happy crate time. God, I hate going to the crates with him. I really hate being in here when it's Slimmy Jim. The slim guy. Um, I do not know. Interesting. Uh, I kind of was thinking that there would be things around here, but I was wrong. Uh, ooh. Is there anything up here? No. Most of the time there's something in, like, the exits to the craze, but I guess in this particular case there isn't. Well, let's move forward. But yeah, like I was saying, um, with my XCOM playthrough, it's an amazing game. I love the game. There are so many things about the first XCOM that were just sort of an issue, and people actually had to mod to fix them. Uh, it's still extremely hard. Like, it is a ridiculously hard game, especially right at the beginning. When your soldiers aren't necessarily that well trained and they literally have, unless you're flanking people, unless you're flanking the enemy, you literally have like maybe a 54% shot to hit an enemy at close range, which some of you may think, well, that's fucking ridiculous. And yeah, it kind of is. But the fact of the matter is, is it was designed with that kind of difficulty bracket in mind from the beginning, depending on what difficulty you're playing on because it is such a hard game. 
and it really is. It is. It, it has the capacity to literally break you if you are not prepared. Okay. Uh, I guess. I want to get to go back to the sub room, but that might be a mistake. I'm going to go to the sub room right quick, hopefully. Hopefully without attracting the unwanted attention of Slim Jim and his egg madness. His demon egg madness. I have to go this way. Because right now my inventory is full and... I've covered this already. Inventory's full of bad things. Very, very bad things. And that was a dead end. And that is never the situation you want to be in in this game where you were stuck on a dead end. Okay. Anything on the ground? Now, in these areas, I need to be keeping an eye out for bolt cutters as well, because that's going to be something of a paramount. Crap, crap, crap. Okay. So, pick up. Pick up. I'm not turning that on, because I know that that will end extraordinarily badly. Actually, technically, I don't need to go up. I need to go around. Because the goal here is to get back to the submarine to drop off items required for the exit. Okay. And then we'll head back that away. Okay. Is there something? There is something here. Oh my god, okay. Um, pick up. Pick up. That was weird. I thought I picked up a lighter, but apparently I didn't. Either way. Um, okay, I'm prepared. Well, not necessarily, but you you get you get the idea. Oh shit. You have the worst fucking timing. Like literally the worst fucking timing. Okay, we're gonna do a loop. We're gonna go all the way up and then head around and then head back down. Persistent now. Good. Well, I can drop off this, I suppose. And the duct tape is still going to come into use, so. Meh. But damn it, that timing. Holy crap. Like, literally, right as I reach the submarine, he's like, I'm going to drop on this guy. Now. Really hope the monster doesn't bug out again. Monsters have having a been having a huge issue with bugging out, which has never really come up as an issue before, and there hasn't been an update to my knowledge, but it's they've been breaking consistently as of late. Okay, let's break that open. And, well, actually that was kind of a, kind of a good thing. this to the deck. Because, like, yeah, like, right now, it feels like the monster broke again. Oh, shit. Nope, he didn't break. He's just really, really, really persistent, apparently. I've never seen him be this persistent, though, which kind of puts me off footing.
like I've never seen him this persistent. Like usually after you break line of sight for so long, he'll just leave you alone. But apparently not this time. There, now we broke a line of sight of him. See, I wish, I wish there was a way to get on top of the crates that are in the middle of the ship. Even if it means going through like the crates on the on the on the bottom part of the ship. I think it would have been really cool for them to allow you to like get up into those crates and maybe find an easter egg or a secret but to my knowledge there's really no way to get up there well you might be able to glitch something you can pick up chairs and stuff so you might be able to glitch it because you can jump so maybe there's a big maybe on that statement sad to say okay um we are back down here Hopefully we won't be interrupted again. So we're gonna put that in the proper spot, and this in the proper spot, and I might as well use the only fuse necessary. Even though I am pretty sure that doing this, like if I go for this ending again, he's just gonna break the freaking controls. Because that's just what the monster does. Okay. Uh, if I go this way and up through the crates, I should be back where I was. Theoretically. Okay, I've been that way. See, there, there's a logic to my madness. Now I know exactly where I've been. Maybe not everywhere I've been, but places I've been. Sorry if you hear a lot of clicks. Having switched back to the to the controller, I'm trying to make as little noise with it as possible, but I haven't found the perfect solution to the whole ambient noise issue. I'm thinking it's going to boil down to me getting either something for my microphone or finding someone who can teach me how to properly calibrate a noise gate. Because that seems to be the solution everyone's been doing professionally is they'll have like specific noise gates set up or they'll actually have like a a padded studio room in their house specifically to like cancel out noises which would be awesome but I don't have that kind of space nor the time to set something like that up so apologies in the ahead of time but that is kind of the way it is right now for me Okay, I was about to say, it's weird for nothing to be in a room. Okay, there's a power room that I can't open anymore. It's got really, really quiet, which is never a good thing. Okay. I'm going to not go back through the crates, but I'm going to go back to the other side of the ship to go to the engine room. and hope that's where the item I need is. Oh, there's the squishy, squishy noise, which means he is nearby. Probably bulkhead adjacent or something. Uh, more glass. Fucking monster. need to be over here too. Crap. Okay, back the way I came. God damn it, Sun Jim. You always make things so difficult. Well, I suppose this could be worse though. It could be the fiend and you all know how I feel about the fiend. Bastard. Okay, well, while we're over here, let's 
do a double check of the vicinity. And then we'll move down. Pretty sure I've been this way. I have. Pretty sure. Okay, yeah, I've been that way. God. The monsters definitely feel a lot more persistent. Like, they, for some reason, feel like they chase you for a lot longer. Even though, for all intents and purposes, they should leave you alone after a point. But we have the item we need. Hopefully he's not on a freaking staircase somewhere. Because right now, I can't hear shit. The monster is so fucking loud. Okay. Did I? Yeah, I used the key. Yeah, I used the key. Shit. He was persistent. He he somehow ma managed to get all the way to the other side of the ship. Chased me from there all the way back to here. That. That takes some balls. But for the sake of this, we're just gonna... We're gonna railroad him. We're gonna go around and around and around and then back to the helicopter. And hope he's not a dick and breaks the controls again. Which he probably will be. Okay, so hopefully he will reset once we get where we're supposed to be. Probably not, but... Yeah. Okay, here we go. We are back to the other part of the ship. Yeah, but I'm... I keep, I keep harping on this, but it feels like something has happened to the monsters. They're either... I'm, and I'll have to check if there was an update, because I don't think there have been. There really hasn't been that many updates since Junkfish did the, um, the Halloween update. Which is disappointing, because they had, they had a lot of opportunities to just implement stuff into the game that is not necessarily required, but is fun... Like, with the Halloween event, they had pumpkin head monsters. They could have done something similar to for Halloween, or for, um, for Christmas. They could have done, like, Santa Claus Big Red, or, um, Rudolph, I don't know, Rudolph the Fiend. Or something cool like that, and they just really haven't been. And it's actually kind of disappointing. Okay, fucker. Which is very disappointing, because they have a lot of opportunity to sort of capitalize on, like, the, the holiday thing. I wish they would. Um, keeping the game updated, and e even small things like that, is a huge boon to a gaming community. Like, it shows that you support the the franchise well I'm, I say franchise as if this is an already pre-existing notion but I mean it could easily be like a small franchise like Tom Clancy's done franchises and other people have done franchises there's no reason that they can't but it it shows that you care it shows that as a small indie developer you care about what happens with your game down the down the line which is something you always want you you want your you want to have a good reputation all the time in game development okay now we have to defend this thing from him which could work or it could not work because god i don't know where he is I don't, I don't like not knowing where the monster is. I 
I could always stick around long enough to see if he attacks the the uh, the gas thing. Because if he does, then that means that I can stop him with the uh, the fire extinguisher. I think. That is actually something I don't know if that would actually work. If you can interrupt him. Where is he? It doesn't traditionally take him this long. And they actually put bracketing there to where I don't think he can, um... I don't think he can get up here by climbing on the walls over here. Which he used to be able to. Okay, for some reason he's just... Maybe he keeps hitting the, the the vents, which that does happen. Like he'll he'll hit those vent pipes and he will just get stunned. But awesome, we made it. We did the challenge. Challenge complete. So the pack rat challenge is done. I will be picking another one next week. But do keep them coming because as I go through these, I'm going to have to start. Um, for the sake of time in my new job, I'm going to have to start figuring out which ones are going to be more reasonable and not. Thankfully, all the ones that I have so far are pretty reasonable. Some of them are on the borderline, but I really appreciate you all continuing to support the series and sending me feedback and supporting the channel in general. And as always, I do have my Patreon page, and if you want to support it a little bit more, you can go there and you can give as little as you feel appropriate to the content that I create. If you think it worthy, then just continue to support me the channel and the paradoxians as a whole but yeah this has been monster the pack rat challenge is done i, re I recommend that you go and check out fire Emblem, uh fire Emblem fates if you haven't already and i will see you in the next video bye bye